Hey guys, Stealthier. Today I'm reviewing the Challenger 2, and I must say I've been grinding a lot in order to get this vehicle. The grind for this vehicle is not as long XP-wise as it might be for other vehicles. I didn't really do the math on that. But where you start with this tree is the Chieftain Mark V, the Challenger 1, the Arietti, and then you get, or at least if this is the route you picked, at least it was for me. From the Arietti, which is a tier 8, you can get one of those tier 9 tokens. And from that, of course, you can still decide to jump from one tier to the other, or from one tree to the other. But I decided to get the Challenger 2. And the Challenger 2, I gotta say, right now, is quite a disappointment. I know that this entire um, Shishkin line of vehicles is completely geared towards armor. The Arietti is the exception. Um, it has a bit more mobility than it has armor. But still, the armor on this thing is not bad. It's pretty damn good. Of course, it's not as well armored as the Challenger 2. Let's have a look at what you can do with this vehicle. Now bear in mind, I already have one of the upgrades, and I mean that's the only armor upgrade, but I'm not using any armor retrofit slots yet, because those things cost me 118,000 credits apiece, let alone the cost for a retrofit. So these things are bloody expensive. Anyway, the armor on the chief, sorry, the Challenger 2. The frontal armor of the hull, lower hull, is 728. That's unangled. Uh, so you can actually be looking at quite some more armor. Turret armor is 953. Side armor is 871. It's going to be very, very hard for enemy tanks to penetrate this side. The actual side of the vehicle is um, not so good. It's 215. So you're looking at pretty much a fifth of the amount of armor that you have on your turret. Whatever you do, don't present your sides. The rear of the vehicle, again the rear of the turret is pretty damn well armored at 359 millimeters. The rear of the vehicle itself, 164. Now what you get with the TESS H upgrade is that um, it adds this cage construction around it. And this cage will protect you from shape charges, which means HGMs and heat. But standard AP rounds are still going to go through. Now. Armor penetration is going to be fired a lot. Um, HE, not really so much, but you will be seeing shaped charges, also known as heat rounds or ATGMs. Now this is where the Challenger 2 has a lot of protection. Your base hull armor, with the shaped charges modifier in mind, is 1065mm. That's more than a meter. That's a lot of armor. The turret front is even better at 100 sorry 1395 millimeters of armor. People are going to have to work hard in order to penetrate this armor. The side is 1275, or sorry, this is the side of the turret 1275, side of the hull 315. Again, keep in mind that the side of a tank and especially the Challenger if it is flat on it's going to be 315. If you're firing at it from a slight angle, it's going to more or less reliably bounce off. Now the rear is again pretty much the easiest spot to penetrate with shaped charges, and I'm talking HGMs because at this stage, at this tier 9, most people won't be firing heat ammunition. So that's the armor. Um, what about the gun? If you have armor this well, then the gun has to be some sort of balancing factor, right? Yes, it is. Um, the gun, I, I'm just going to say the gun sucks. The gun is not good. You have a penetration of 518, and that's with the upgraded APFSDS round, the L27A1. 518. Let's just compare that to what we can find with the other tanks at this tier. Leopard 2A6. Let's say that is is using um, the APFSDS round has f 606 millimeters, so the Challenger 2 is behind that by more than 80 millimeters. Other tanks in this line. Let's say that you're using an M1A2. The M1A2's penetration, APFSDS round, 
592, 80 millimeters better. Very, very significant difference there. Shishkin's line, of course, has the mighty T90MS. T90MS also has an ATGM. Now let's first look at the AP rounds. These have a penetration of 657, which means they're still going to struggle in going through your armor, but a weak spot can be found. The ATGM will go through your armor. This thing has an incredible armor penetration of 1310 millimeters, and that's enough to blow through the frontal armor of a Challenger. Now, of course, it depends a little bit on where you're hitting the thing. A shape charge of um, 1300 millimeters of penetration will not go through the turret, it will go through the hull. But the enemy is going to have to work hard in order to get it. And by that, I mean that the enemy first has to load an HGM. And let's say that you are actually dealing with a T90 that's firing at you. A T90 MS to be precise. The T90 has to be sitting still for at least two seconds in order to aim that missile. Or sorry, one and a half seconds. And it has a reload time of 20 seconds. So in order for a tank such as the T90 MS to switch from its standard AP ammunition to an ATGM in order to start penetrating your armor, you're going to be um, at least 20 seconds in front of him, or at least you have 20 seconds to try and respond to that or get your hull in cover. And aside from that, let's say you are facing a position where you are going to take ATGMs, and that's the only damaging weapon. Even with three missiles, and let's say the missiles have an average roll, which means they do 970 damage. By the end of those three missiles, if you haven't taken any other damage, you're still going to be there. The Challenger has, and that, um, sorry, that is in um, its current form, 3,300 hit points. And I'm saying in its current form because the moment you start adding armor retrofit slots and these things stack, you can go somewhere up to the ranges of 3,900 to 4,000 hit points. So the enemy can keep firing 80 gems at you all day and your armor will take it. If your armor doesn't take it, your hit points are going to uh, slowly whittle down. But the real problem is uh, being flanked. And I'm reviewing this tank in uh, the current version, which is 0.11 or 0.11. In 0.12, the Challenger 2 is going to get a mobility nerf. It's going to be less fast to accelerate. It's going to be slower to move around. That means more chances of actually getting flanked. Now, the flanking that this thing needs to do itself in order to actually get a penetrating shot is also quite significant. You have to go through with an armor penetration round that only has 518 millimeters of penetration. Most tanks at tier 9 are just going to laugh this shell off unless you're aiming for weak spots. And I'm not talking weak spots in the sense of lower frontal plate. It's not as obvious as that. You're going to have to hit objects which are far smaller, such as driver's viewports, commander's cupolas, and commander's hatches. Stuff like that is the only real areas that I have found the Challenger 2 to be able to go through. And that is, of course, if you're playing PvP. If you're playing PvE, this thing can work really, really well. But even there, you're going to find that the tank, I don't know, it just lacks something. And um, one of the things it lacks is the capacity to fire a heat round. Now, I know it is a rifled gun, as far as I'm uh, getting my facts correctly. It cannot fire heat. So the only thing you can unlock is a firepower retrofit slot, but no heat round. That means that you do not have the capacity to get anywhere near the insane damage that, for example, the heat round on the T90MS can do which is uh, 883. And keep in mind, this thing has an 8 rounds a minute rate of fire, so the T90MS can keep pumping out that damage. Challenger 2, not so much. I have a damage potential of 565, with a rate of fire of 7 rounds a minute. Now, yes, my crew isn't fully uh, veteran yet, or doesn't uh, hasn't gone to tier 5 yet, or skill 5, so I don't have all the best perks. And you can probably get this reload down a bit more to improve your rate of fire.
but you're still dealing with the lower end of the penetration, the lower end of the damage spectrum. Um, aside from that, I gotta say that the gun itself is pretty good. Your accuracy is 0.10, and that's without any retrofits. You can get this down even further. I have read people's posts on forums where you can get this, ac um, this accuracy down to 0.4 or 0 0.04. And I think that that is what the Challenger 2 may just need in order to actually penetrate targets. Because for me, um, pretty much the go-to shell, if I'm playing PvP with the Challenger 2 in its current version, is Hash. Yeah, I'm spamming a HE at them because I just cannot manage to get consistent penetrations with my armor penetrating rounds. It's probably me. It's probably so that I'm not playing the tank the way that it should be played. But instead I end up soaking damage. So taking damage so that my other allies don't have to. And that's something that the challenger of course does pretty well. But I usually find myself doing somewhere between 500 and 1500 damage. I'm at tier 9. I should be dealing somewhere along the ranges of four to 6,000 damage per match. But again, it's probably me. I haven't been able to figure out how it works yet. So this review in that sense is going to be a bit lacking and I apologize for that. But I have not been able to find a good way to play the challenger so that I get a lot of damage done. And you're going to see that as I'm going to be starting up a PvP match. Now for the commander, I'm um, currently using Maximilian Koenig in order to get the reputation that I uh, need to unlock everything else on this vehicle as soon as possible. And as you can see, they take up a lot of XP, or reputation rather. 118,520 retro, uh, vehicle reputation points for one armor retrofit slot. 136,000 for a firepower retrofit slot and 100,000 for an engine that gets you an acceleration which is 0.3 seconds better. Not worth it, or at least not yet. I'm first going to start unlocking armor retrofits and firepower before I go on to uh, get the engine. What I do want to have, um, and I currently have the funds for it, is the Savan 15 gunner sight, which is going to improve my accuracy by 10%. And that means that, um, let's see, switch to a different vehicle so that the stats get upgraded or updated. Now I have an accuracy of 0 0.08. So I'm not going to be more effective at dealing with weak spots. As far as the consumables go, I have all of the um, standard gear, at least for me. So that's the expensive stuff that I usually end up not using. I would recommend getting an automatic fire extinguisher because I have found that the Challenger line, and I'm talking about the Challenger 1 and 2, tends to catch fire. If you take shells um, in the rear of the vehicle, the engine, I don't know, it's not as bad as the Challenger 1, but this thing catches fire quite often. So make sure you have one of those fire extinguishers on you. Other than that, I'm using the high tier field maintenance kit so that I have the capacity to reload my shells. And especially in the PvE match, this is something that you will need. Now for retrofits, I cannot really talk about what the retrofits do, but I wanted to do the review anyway. Of course, the main retrofit slots are going to be locked into armor, which means that you can get more hit points and um, make modules less vulnerable. So I'm definitely going to go with the internal hull reinforcement mark two, but look at the prices of that thing for a moment. If I want to mount this retrofit, I'm going to be paying 1.8 million credits. That's the same as getting a tier 5 tank, such as for example the Leo, uh, the 1A5. It has a price tag of 1.9. This is bloody expensive. So running tier 9s is a rather expensive hobby. And if you have a tier 9, I would highly recommend that you have at least one premium tank at tier 6. Anyway, enough about the numbers. You can look all this up yourself, of course. So let's show you how this thing performs in battle. And um, again, disclaimer right before we get off and go into PvP. It's going to suck. 
It's just that I am not that good with this tank as I would like to be. And I'm not sure if it's the tank. I'm pretty sure it's me. It's not so much the tank that's causing the problem. So um, I'm going to start up a PvP match and I'm going to pause the video here for a while. Oh, actually, already joining in. Joining in tier 9 matches can take a long time because there are just not that many people playing at tier 9 in PvP. PvE matches usually take less time to queue up, so if you are a big PvE fan, the Challenger 2 can do very well there and you don't have to wait as long. Now the map that I'm loading into is Port Storm. I have a Challenger 2 on my side as well as a 2A6 and a T90MS against three T90MSs and one Challenger 2. Now, if I'm looking at the lineup of the enemy team, I'm thinking, okay, the Arietes, I cannot penetrate these things frontally. I don't know where the weak spot of this thing is. The T90s, I can pretty reliably, uh, reliably penetrate by going through the commander's hatch. T90MS, mm, it's not going to be easy. I think commander's hatch. Challenger 2, virtually impossible. Challenger 2 on Challenger 2 conflict can take a long while because it's basically a question of who is going to run out of HE or hash ammo first. Driver Craig in. Another thing that you need to know about the Challenger 2 is that as you can see it's not terribly mobile and this mobility is going to get worse as it's going to get nerfed in the next patch in point 12. This mobility means that um, Artie loves you especially Paladins because they do a very very high amount of damage and they tend to knock out quite a few modules. The Panzer Howitzer 2000 does a lot of damage as well because you are not likely to be able to evade um, all three shots. You might be able to evade say the last one or if you're fast enough you get behind cover you can evade two out of three but never three out of three. So keep in mind that artillery is going to take an interest in you. Now I'm going to push up very aggressively in order to soak up damage for my team. That is what this tank does. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe I'm playing it too aggressively. So I'm very eager to hear in the comments or to read in the comments what you think of my playstyle and the challenger. But um, I think that this is the role that the challenger 2 was designed for, at least in the game. Of course, um, in real world it has a different usage, let's say. And I gotta say, I'm sorry about the frame rate, I'm not sure why my FPS is so low. I'm surprised how far I can punch up here. There's an Ariete and a Challenger 1 there, but they seem to be engaged with the conflict in directly in front of them, so I might actually be able to flank these guys. <coughs> I penned him and I got a hash round from an Arietti in return. Now this Challenger 2, sorry, Challenger 1, I might be able to go through the driver's hatch. Yep, damaged him. Here's the Arietti. I'm just trying to make sure that I don't get out of here. The gun depression on the Challenger 2 can be a problem. Look, I didn't pen them. The Challenger 2's gun depression can be a problem. If I'm looking over my engine block, I'm in trouble. Because it means that I do not always have the gun depression in order to get my gun low enough. And um, I believe it's even so that if you're looking at a target over your engine block, you have a gun elevation. You don't even have gun depression. Now, let's get towards this Challenger 1, if I can get by the wreck of this Arietti. And yeah, I can just squeeze between this container and the other part there. Now, um, of course, being a video, um, and I'm, as you've seen, I'm recording this live, I'm not cherry picking. Um, for some reason, this is the odd man out, and I'm actually doing quite a lot of damage. At least a lot more than I usually do. So all the bitching about the Challenger 2 that I did initially, um, it's not to be disregarded. Because usually I still suck in the Challenger 2. Um, just not this time. I don't know. 
596. In the meanwhile, the rest of the team seems to be failing. And I think that's because I may have drawn too many friendlies with me down south. Again, for some reason my frame rate is terrible at 40... 44 rounds or 44 for, for frames per second. So you can get the Paladin as it's gonna be running away. 580. Damage his tum turret ring and he's out. Now the battle is gonna get interesting. Because now I'm gonna be facing actual tier 9 main battle tanks. That is, unless we cap. And I think that if we wanna win. Capping is really the only option here. So I'm going to stay here, hide my lower hull, because that's, as I've shown you, the weakest part of this tank. And I'm basically going to let them come to me. BMP3. I can penetrate that pretty easily. That is, if I don't completely donk my shot like that. Now I have a Challenger 1 with me, capping, but there is a T90 MS coming up my flank. And I'm kinda worried about getting flanked, yep, there it is. A BMP 3M is gonna come on my starboard side, or port side, sorry, naval buff, so I usually talk in port and starboard, which means left and right, of course. Now it's just the Challenger 1 and me. And ricochet. Now I'm pretty much in as much trouble as I could possibly be. Lower frontal plate. I actually managed to go through. Against all expectations there. And I think I'm now taking fire from the BMP in my rear. 201 damage there. And defeat. Now this match, I actually did a very high amount of damage, at least for my standards, of 4762. But what I'm more interested in is how much damage I bounced, because I think I could have done better there. So let's see what kind of um, armor equivalent or armor... Um, what's the word they use for that again? Damage bounced... Anyway, let's just wait for the screen to come up. Alright, the teams. I did manage to make first in my team. Um, I got 3800 XP. I got the Spotter Award <laughs> for spotting the most vehicles on the team. Um, of course, not really something that the challenge is supposed to be doing. Yeah, potential damage made a like Only 3000. It's not that much. I took quite a bit of damage because my angling was off. Now I'm going to go into PvP again and actually try to show you what I mean by how this tank can suffer if you're um, facing enemies which are very very much f pointing their frontal armor towards you where you cannot penetrate it. I'm gonna pause the recording here so that you don't have to suffer through the entire battle queue and once it's back up I'm gonna resume the video so I'll see you soon. Okay, the battle queue took another four minutes, so I'm glad I actually paused it instead of trying to talk over that. I'm in Cold Strike, and I'm one of the few uh, tier 9 MBTs. We have four on our team. The enemy team has, let's see, I think three. They have a Crab and a BMP T72. We have a Crab, and we have... Um, no, sorry, that's it, as far as tier 8s, sorry, tier 9s go. Now, in this position, or in this map, I'm going to be pushing up the 8-line slash 9-line. This is where you don't have too many targets which can fire into your side. Of course, you got to be careful as you're crossing the C-line and the E-line, because that's where people can actually try and get a shot in your flank. Otherwise, um, I'm going to be pretty aggressive in order not to give the enemy good positions. And I'm hoping that the guys from Skill, um, with their Leo 2A6 and their T90, are going to use me as a shield. Because that is pretty much how I consider my role. Meat shield. Moving forward, having stuff bounce off my armor, 
so that the uh, friendlies don't have to risk their armor as much because let's face it the T90 MS is pretty well armored but it is not as well armored as the Challenger 2. The Leopard 2A6 though has armor that is at least as good as the Challenger 2 and possibly better. I think that in the current version of Armored Warfare the Challenger 2, sorry, the Leopard 2A6 is better than the Challenger 2 in all regards. It's faster, has um, at least frontally a better armor layout and the gun is overall better and I believe it can still fire heat rounds. Now I got at least two M1A1s behind me. One 2A5 off to the flank so I should be okay in so far as I'm not going to be taking flanking fire but those are I suppose you could say famous last words. There's an M1A1 View range on the Challenger is, I believe, 400 meters, which is pretty good for a main battle tank. And I think that um, the M1A2 has the best view range. Not going to go through the lower frontal plate of a T90. And the BMPT is jamming missiles into my tank. Look at the amount of damage that I'm taking. Three active penetrations. And this does highlight something that this tank lacks and what I'm talking about is an active penetration or active um, protection system. I don't have the capacity to shoot down missiles before they hit my tank. There comes the next salvo for the T-72. I'm not going to sit around and wait till those things hit. Turret ring's been knocked out. I can't look around anymore. And there is an M1A1 that's close to flanking this position. Here's the T90. Trying to get a shot, only hit the track. I'm very, very worried about that BMP T72 that's kind of been up towards me. No pen. Lost another bunch of hit points due to a Challenger 2 there. Slightly angled the tank. 800 hit points left. There's the Terminator 2. Missile going in. And he's not aiming his missiles at me currently. Look at this onslaught. I'm completely screwed. I did get the, ch the Terminator 2, but I only managed to do 742 damage got completely overrun in this position. A T90 MS that was with me, I believe it's this one, is gonna be next. There is just a very very effective wolf pack coming up from the right flank of the map, down the 9 line, down the 8 line, it's gonna push into the M1. Yeah, I don't see us winning this one. So, that was pretty much the other side of the Challenger 2. Um, again, I think it's down to me. I think that you do need to armor the, or sorry, the angle of the Challenger 2 a little bit in order to hide your weak spots. But you saw that the missiles from the Terminator went right through my lower armor. Um, I doubt they went through my turret because that turret has almost 1400 millimeters of armor. And I believe that the BMPT, sorry, the uh, BMPT-72, the Terminator 2, has the same amount of penetration that the T-90 does. Anyway, um, I'm going to pause it here, wait for the results screen to come up, and then show you how this thing can perform in PvE. Alright, as I predicted, that was a defeat. And I think it was a pretty terrible defeat too, considering we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tanks left alive on the enemy team. They completely handed our asses to us. I still got 1500 XP for that, and keep in mind this is with premium, no additional boosters, but I did get the commander bonus of another 10%. So actually, this is more along the lines of what well, says 946 here. I'd say somewhere along the lines of 1250 XP f that it would really be. Damage that I took and that I mitigated was only 1800. 
I received 3300 damage plus the 1800 that I mitigated, so somewhere along the uh, 5100s in damage. And of course, the BMP T72, uh, let's see how much damage it did. Um, I did kill it. Here it is. It did 2000 damage. That was to me and some others, but I was a pretty big damage pinata for that guy. I took a lot of hits from him. So, um, this is the part that I really, really dislike about the Challenger 2. This is something that, and it happens pretty often, that I'm thinking I'm going to sell this thing. I worked really hard to get it, but I'm not sure if it's worth keeping. Maybe in a few months they're going to buff it again, and they're going to see that the penetration might not be as well as they had hoped, or that it might not work as well for the vehicle as they had expected. Or I'm going to actually learn how to properly play this tank. Whichever happens first. At any rate, I'm going to offload the hash rounds in order to make more room for armor penetration rounds, so that I can take it into PvE. You don't need hash in PvE. Armor penetration is going to be more than enough to deal with the bots that you're going to come up against. I'm going to pause it here, wait till the game is loaded so you don't have to suffer through the mission queue. Alright, Operation Kodiak. I'm in this map with one tier 9, the Leopard 2A6, two 2A5s and one M1A1 main battle tank. So we're all tanks, that means that we're probably not going to be able to capture those comm stations because that takes quite some fast vehicles. Um, I have managed to pull it off in the Challenger, but I end up doing so much less damage than my teammates that I don't really think it's worth it. So my main objective is to defend this position here, which of course is where the bots are going to spawn around and do as much damage as possible. You can see that the Leopards, sorry, yeah, the, both the M1A1 and the 2A6 are actually quite fast compared to the Challenger 2. At least they took a lot less time to get moving. Now, let's see if I can get a good shot. Yeah, or not. Already died before I got the chance to get it. High damage roll there. Pretty unusual to get a damage roll that high. And I gotta say, in PvE I'm usually pretty careless when I'm driving the Challenger 2 because I know that unless these vehicles get a position on my flank, they are not likely to damage me at all. The only thing that you nearly really need to worry about is Thunderbolts spawning off your flanks. It may sound weird, but I have been killed driving my Challenger 2 when multiple of those M8 suddenly spawn off my flank and I had nowhere to go. So be be careful with the Challenger 2 because its flanks are good but they're not so good that they can actually defend against multiple tanks hammering into them with high penetration armor penetration rounds. You can see that all the other main battle tanks here, all the other players are not making an effort to go for the secondaries, and I don't really blame them. For some reason, that Arietti is looking at me, and he, yep, yeah, he's dead. Now, it's a bit unfortunate that there's no T90MS in this uh, team, because it would be a really good comparison to show you guys how much damage, or how much damage potential, the T90MS has in PvE. If you're looking for a very, very high-end damage dealer in PvE, the T90MS is really your go-to tank. They're going to be more effective than the Challenger 2 at it. The way I see it, the Challenger 2 is... It's a sort of rolling fortress. But a fortress with outdated guns. I think that that would be a decent approximation. It is very hard to kill. It has a lot of armor and a lot of hit points, but the moment that you come up against something that actually is um, using some newer equipment that has higher penetration or that has good armor, you're going to suffer in this tank.
Now I'm also pretty much in the wrong position because the bots are spawning in all the wrong positions here. If you're still trying to learn the positions where the bots spawn, um, don't bother. In the next patch they're going to change that and they're going to get the bots to move to a sort of randomized spawn so that you don't know where they're going to be. So don't bother learning where the bots spawn. It may give you a small advantage in this patch or in the current version of the game, but in the next patch it's not really that useful. Waiting for him to turn around. And of course this is something that bots will happily do. Players are um, not that stupid. They are just way more intelligent, especially at tier 9, because that is when people have been working really, really hard to get the tank that they have wanted to get. You're dealing with experienced players. Now again, my angle wasn't that bad. I had a pretty decent shot, but I just could not go through. So if I can ram this thing to death, I don't need to bother. Meanwhile, the base is being captured. Probably one or multiple M8s. Yep, Thunderbolts. Firing on the move is something that the Challenger does pretty well. And I suppose that you could say with the impending mobility nerf, it's going to be even better at it. Simply because you're not going to be moving so fast. It seems like one, actually two, of my team members tried to go for the secondaries. So that may lead me to do more damage. But they were never going to make it in time. Not if you start with three minutes left on the clock. That was an HE frag round, by the way. Did a whole of 14 damage. Bots will try to fire HE at you. And more often than not, they'll never go through that armor. Let's see if I can get a sh good shot on this guy. Nope. Okay, he's dead. Now on this map, you gotta... The moment that you have the heliport secure, of course, you gotta start moving towards the next objective. I have found that if you take too long, one or two tanks are gonna spawn in the cap circle, and you're gonna be in trouble. You're going to see that multiple tanks are going to spawn there, they're going to cap it quickly, and you lose. So, I'm trying to get to deal with this Thunderbolt as quickly as possible so we can move on. Got to defend that for 1 minute 50 seconds. But this mission is usually really easy. I'm sitting on 10,000 damage. The Leopard 2A6 is 30, sitting on uh, 13,000, so it's done 3,000 points damage more than I have. And I think that's partly down to me not having a heat round. Identify target. Huh, tank. Ammo rack on the Thunderbolts. It bounced off my front. No surprise there. Trying to get a good speed going so that I can ram this guy. Let's see, I can just park here. Um, pretty much go AFK and this tank, if it's just gonna sit here, is not going to be able to do anything. I can even just push it along if I want to. Just reunite it with this buddy back there. <laughs> Such is the engine power of this tank. Okay, I'll take out your buddy. And there you go. Is this guy actually firing at me? Let's hope that was a mistake. Maybe he was pissed off for me just pushing tanks into his way, but he had plenty of targets to fire at already. Ramka, still a very hard target to penetrate. Oh, I just missed the turret hitbox there. I hit the turret, but nothing critical. Now this thing, I don't think I can penetrate. And, of course, it's sitting beautifully still. Yeah, I did manage to penetrate it on the driver hatch. 
but only because this thing is sitting perfectly still. If he would have been an actual player, and I'm on a two angling, wiggling his armor, um, I would not have been able to penetrate him the way that I did. So, 14,000 damage done. Is this something um, unusual? Not really. I have done this thing, or this amount of damage, and more in the Arietti, and I believe in the Challenger 1 before it as well. So again, nothing really that special about the Challenger 2. Results, 4,390 XP. Again, keep in mind that's with a 10% bonus for Maximilian. 13,000 damage. Um, so let's round it down to 6,000 spotting damage. And again, this guy, the Leopard 2A6, did almost 3,500 points more in damage than I did. He spot out the same amount of targets, got the same amount of assists, but he just did 3,500 points more than I did. And I think that that is down to the amount of heat that he can fire, that he can fire heat in the first place. Damage mitigated is going to be uh, well, not that special because it just didn't take that much fire. Um, 4,690. I have seen this number go way, way, way up. I have, I think, the record that I set for the Challenger 2 for myself is somewhere along the lines of 15,000 damage done or damage mitigated when I was the only tank left. At any rate, what's the verdict on the Challenger 2? Um, for now, I'd say don't get this tank. Do not get this tank. I'm stuck with it, pretty much, because I've already researched it, I've spent my tier 8 token on it, or my tier 9 token, depending on how you want to see that. Um, I've invested quite heavily in getting the upgrades in order to get this thing as viable as possible, and it is a good tank, or at least a decent tank in PvP, uh, sorry, PvE. In PvP, again, I'm going to emphasize it one last time, it is probably me. It is probably me that doesn't really know how to properly work this tank in PvP yet. So hopefully um, in a few weeks time I'm going to be able to show you exactly how to use this thing in PvP as a sort of late addendum to this review. But until then, um, if you're grinding the Challenger 1 line or the Arietti line, I'm sorry, but just do not buy the Challenger 2 yet until you know exactly what this thing is going to be doing and how the tier 9s are going to be balanced because there's still a lot of balancing going on they have been introduced one patch ago I think I think it was in point 11 themselves that they were introduced maybe point 10 so they haven't been in the game that long Obsidian still gathering data on the tanks still trying to balance these things out and maybe they're going to find that the Challenger 2 is overperforming, maybe it's underperforming. We'll see what the data will tell us. So, um, again, I would not recommend it, but maybe you have some terrific gameplay with this tank. And you had a great amount of fun with it. If you did, please let me know how you do it, because I want to be able to replicate it so I can show it on my channel. For now, thanks for watching the review. I hope it helped you get a bit of an idea of how the Challenger can and cannot perform and um, whether you do still want to get it or whether you're just going to pass on this thing for now. Hope you found it useful. If you did, please hit like as a way of telling me that I did a good job. If you want to see more of my reviews, I have a playlist with all the Armored Warfare material and I'll be uploading another video in a few days. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.